Let's go. Oh, shit. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel, hope it all well. Now, it's exactly a year ago to the day that I made my Good For The Soul video, and what a cracking session that was. Two lovely Dover Soul on the cheap wheel boat rod, and I thought it'd be a bit of fun to come back to the exact same spot to see if I can do it again. Wishful thinking, possibly, but uh, if we don't try, we won't know. High water, it's in around four and a half hours time, got ages yet. 10.8 meters which in old money for newport is 12.5 because we had 1.7 a nice size tide for this spot but uh it's like i've said in previous videos that i've made down here i wouldn't fish it on a big tide simply because the rip is far too strong but today we'll be all right is history about to repeat itself there's only one way to find out let's give it a bash Ooh, it's a scorcher, it's a scorcher. Good job we got that northeasterly wind. Now usually I'm moaning about the northeasterly, but not today. It's cooling me down a little bit. I'm gonna be fishing with three rods. In terms of the sole, I'll be using the cheapy old boat rod. I'm gonna stick a three hook flapper rig on that, small size one hooks, straight ragworm, and I'll cast it 20, 30 yards max, nice and close. As for the two beach casters, I'll be using fish bait. 3-0 pulley panels, mackerel, squid, bluey, you get the gist. And uh, we'll see what's out there. Could be conger eel, thornback ray, bass. Who knows? It's one big mystery. And I know that uh, this is not everyone's cup of tea. At this time of the year, a lot of anglers are chasing smooth hounds and ray, etc. Which is fine. But this is what I enjoy doing. Such a nice part of the world. I tell you what, the bird life today is on top form. There's swifts everywhere. I've never seen so many swifts. Ducking and diving, taking those insects. They're coming really close to me. And I was down by the Reen earlier on filming and there was a beautiful male bullfinch on the fence post. And if there's anyone watching who's never seen a male bullfinch, have a look on Google. For me, one of the most striking birds in the UK. But yeah, beautiful.
There we are then, all three rods now in action. I got the cheapy old boat rod down in the rocks, stuck a bell on the end, and I've cast it, I don't know, 20 yards or so, but the two beach casters have given those a bit more of a whack. As the water was coming in, the shoreline was absolutely plastered with mullet. Great sight. And uh, very often, where there's mullet, there's bass. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I've had a few taps on the boat rod, but I reckon it's those mullet that I spotted earlier. Just playing around with it. As the water pushes up, they should clear off. Second cast now on the two main rods on the fish baits. Nothing as of yet. Right arm rod is a bluey and squid cocktail. And on the left arm rod, I've stuck on a big bunch of ragworm. The water is quite flat. Bit of a ripple, very gentle ripple, but uh, generally speaking, like a sheet of glass. That's my excuse sorted. They are 100% small mullet. I just saw one. You may have uh, seen it like splash on the surface, but what they're doing, they're just pecking at the bait. And of course, on these size ones, the chances of hooking them, well, slim to say the least. Yeah, I wish I brought my uh, mullet gear now. <laughs> oh, bit of life out there. Yeah, those mullet down there, what they're doing, they're picking up my bait and they're swimming towards the rocks. Hence why my line keeps on going slack. But like I said a moment ago, the chances of hooking those on, you know, sea hooks are pretty slim. Oh, look at that guys, hear the bell? That was no mullet. Take the camera down there. That was a cracking bite. Ah, missed him again, missed him again. Next time, we'll get him.
There's so much surface activity. Every now and again, big splash. It makes you want to fly fish, you know? I do like a bit of saltwater fly fishing. I used to do it down on the mouth of the Ogmo. Good fun. But yeah, it catches you off guard because uh, all, you, all you can hear are the birds and the gentle ripple on the water. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> something breaks the surface. It's like, oh, what was that? So uh, they're either shaking off sea lice or they're taking insects off the surface. But they're not taking my bait. I know that much. All perched on my fishing line. Never seen anything like it. Those birds are having a whale of a time on my fishing line. <laughs> of course, there's no chance of them becoming entangled. They're very clever and they're very acrobatic. But uh, yeah, they're using the line as a perch. They're sitting on there, looking out for any insects, grabbing the insect back onto the fishing line. The camera that I'm using, it hasn't got a very good zoom, so a uh, bit of a shame that. Ah, uh, fairly quiet. We're about an hour and a half off high water. Just a couple of bites on the boat rod and that's about it. Gotta be something out there. The water is really warm. It's like a bath. Probably not a good thing, but uh, I'm not going to complain. Thirty minutes off high water. Now today, as you can see, I'm fishing off the sea wall, next to the pink house, right on the edge of Gowcliff. Got Redwick up there in the distance. Sorry, I forgot to mention where I was earlier. Oh, you come those birds again. Right, I'll see if I can get in this time. Look at that.
We're in, guys. What a bass, what a bass. We done it guys, we done it. Yes, good old cheapy old boat rod once again. Let's get him unhooked, yes. A beautiful bar of Bristol Channel Silver. There he is. Yes, let's pop him back in. He's gone. Oh. Right. Let's whack out a big piece of bluey. Gotta be a thorn back right out there. She's ebbing back now, so uh, I'm casting those lead weights to my left, just in case they move. I got a 7 ounce gripper on each of those rigs, holding bottom lovely. On that rod down there, I've got a 6 ounce gripper. I'm only casting it, well, 20-30 yards, so probably on that one I could have got away with a 5, but there we are. I prefer a 6 because even though the tide today isn't a massive one, you still gotta watch the rip here on the ebb. 
yeah, to be honest, I'm a bit shocked that uh, I've had no bites on these rods. Calm conditions, which is what Thornback Ray like. And not even a conga. Usually it's odds on, you know, to get a conga here, but... Uh, well, look, I've got another hour to go, so we might get one yet. Ooh! You're the bell then, guys? You're the bell? I'll be patient. If it goes again, I'll take the camera down there. But those mullet are still hanging around and they're still playing with the bait. And it's like Dad always used to say to me, you know when they're on there. Like that bass, I knew he was on there. Ding ling ling, ding ling ling. I'm off work tomorrow. Happy days. Let's go. Oh, shh. Yes, we're in guys, we're in. Oh, no, we're still there. Oh, oh, I come off, guys. You see that then? See the bend in the rod? Oh, I bet that was another bass. Ah, got dead, but uh, right, another cast. Ah, that's a shame that we lost our fish. The bottom snood was all tangled, so I think it was a conga. You know, it felt decent, probably five or six pounds. Came off, I don't know, 10 yards out. That's what happens. In front of me, you've got a few sticks, you've got a few rocks, and I could feel it, you know, great up against those. And it was good night nurse, off it popped. I mean, you know, it, it could have been a bass, but Odds on that that was a conga. It's a good time now on the ebb. One more, one more fish. Or oh, two. Oh, cheapy old boat rod. What a bite that was then. I was about to do my outro guys. And uh, yeah, the old bell was going like the clappers there. <sighs> yeah.
Yes, we're in, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there was a little conga it just just come off by there Right, that's me done now guys, time to make a move. We're around two and a half hours into the ebb, the water's flying back, time for me to go. It's been a cracking session, and you may be thinking, hang on guy, you only caught one fish, why was it cracking? Well, it's been cracking for a number of different reasons. Okay, we did catch that bass, I missed a few good fish on the cheapy old boat rod, but the weather's been fantastic. All right, it's been a bit warm, but uh, it's been beautiful. The wildlife, like I said earlier, has been on top form. Seeing those birds perching on my line, that will live with me forever. What a fantastic sight. I thoroughly enjoyed it, to be honest. And at the start of the video, I asked the question, would history repeat itself? All right, we haven't caught any Dover sole today, like we did on this day last year, but we did get that beautiful bass. So I guess, in a way, history has repeated itself, you know? Guys, as always, thanks for watching. It's mega appreciated. Any questions or comments you have, pop them below and I'll get back to you. Until the next one, look after yourselves. Take care. All the best. <laughs>